Hey guys, welcome to the third installment of my class series, which is quickly turning into one of the most successful miniseries I have on my channel. First two episodes covered fighters and slayers, and I suppose we're continuing the carry trend since, by popular demand, today's episode will be discussing marksmen, also known as AD carry or ADC, and I'm pretty excited to talk about this one because of the title. In the previous episode, I brought up the three forms of damage, front-loaded, sustained, and back-loaded. The vast majority of ADCs are present in the sustain category, aside from a select few like Samira, Jin, and I suppose Zaya and Callista to some extent since they place a heavy reliance on their feathers and spears respectively for finishing damage towards the end of the fight. Conventionally, the marksman role consists of champions with incredible scaling, since auto attacks grow stronger through more than just one metric. Attack damage, critical strike chance, attack speed, and anything that benefits from attack speed such as on-hit effects. In exchange, it takes a very long time for them to reach a point where they have significantly high values in each of those stats. That makes them really weak in the early to mid game and generally need to farm for gold since they're at a disadvantage in combat. They're also all ranged champions who can safely output their DPS from a distance, which means so long as that distance is kept, they can quickly become the most threatening member of their team, hence the term AD carry, attack damage carry. When it comes to traditional team compositions, they have the most uncompromising requirements of any class. The basic consensus of what needs to be played top lane is generally anyone who is able to survive by themselves for extended periods of time, or someone who can absorb lots of pressure. This can be literally anyone. Tanks, fighters, slayers, mages, specialists, even controllers can go top to some extent. We've seen a couple instances of Soraka, Karma, Lulu, Sona top like back when they were pretty OP. Uh, the jungle is very much the same way too. In fact, it's the only role in the game that has all 7 classes in its active roster. Mid lane and support don't have quite the freedom of choice comparatively, but you get the idea. Top, jungle, mid, and support all have a lot of different champions you can mix and match, whereas bot lane almost exclusively fielded marksmen for the longest time ever. But since the big fiasco with crit items during mid season 8, where all the crit items were basically nuked and AD carries were the most unplayable class, a few mages and other champions began seeing play as bot laners, such as Karthus, Swain, Ziggs, things like that. Even though they didn't bring nearly the same kind of late game machine gunning potential, their early and mid games were way more forgiving and they could survive lane relatively comfortably. As of now, however, they're mostly just gimmicky champions and the bot lane still consists of marksmen to this very day. Speaking of which, up until Season 5, every marksman was more or less the same. They all basically did damage through attacks. Caitlyn, Corky, Draven, Azriel, Jinx, Kog'Maw, Lucian, Misfortune, Sivir, Tristana, Twitch, Varus, and Vayne. There were nuances between each other, such as Ezreal and Varus favoring long-range poke damage, whereas Draven and Lucian preferred to go more aggressive with their high rushdown potential. Ash was pretty much the only AD carry who didn't outright prioritize going in for the deeps. It wouldn't be until Jin when we got a second marksman that could double in utility and long-range cover fire. Since then, Riot's design philosophy would change drastically, and they would push the limits of what defines an AD carry. Callista, Kindred, Zaya, Kaisa, Senna, Aphelios, and Samira all have very very distinct playstyles, and even though we joke a lot about how the four most recent ones are extremely overloaded, 200 years and all that, they definitely expanded on what marksmen were able to do. It's pretty obvious that their predecessors behaved very much the same, and it's partly why a good number of them are starting to be played less frequently, because in terms of playstyles, older marksmen may not be quite as dynamic. We've seen a lot of discussion questioning the validity of marksmen. While their primary designation is being the main damage dealer for their team, more often than not, they seem to be just an easy target for assassins or divers to lock onto for free 300 gold, and they place so much dependence on the teammates to protect them in order to do practically anything. In 2017, there was an entire meme spun around about how absolutely useless marksmen were right as we were facing the brunt of tank meta that spanned pretty much the better part of Season 6 and 7. Also during the same time, there was a class-wide rework for assassins right at the start of 2017. That basically overtuned the living hell out of a lot of champions like Katarina, LeBlanc, Rengar, Talon, Fizz, Kha'Zix, Zed, etc. The second wave of tank meta came when Maokai, Sejuani, and Zag were reworked midway through Season 7. All of these champions had way higher base stats, way more mobility, way more crowd control, and were either extremely difficult to take down or were incredibly fast. Assassins and skirmishers had front-loaded damage that far outstripped any ADC, and tanks were practically unkillable. Sunfire Cape Iceborne Gauntlet gave them almost twice the combat power that an Infinity Edge and Rapid Fire Cannon did at the time. And this was I'd say at the peak of armor items. I believe Sunfire, Iceborne, and Tabis gave most tanks 200 armor by 20 minutes. It was insane. Anyway, 
Bot lane's had it rough for the past few years. Crit item changes non-stop, Arden sensor meta, banner of command, etc, etc, etc. No matter what changes are made to League, AD carries seem to rack up the highest number of casualties out of any role, and their situation is getting to a point where it beggars belief if teams even need marksmen anymore. And that brings up the focal point of this discussion, is AD carry a dying role? Quick clarification, when I say dying I don't mean marksmen are useless or trash. What I mean is whether or not they are as necessary to a team composition as the player base deems it so, and if there could be the possibility of other champions being fielded in bot lane, not just mages but perhaps melee champions. Aside from Kindred and Quirky, all marksmen are typically played in the bot lane, making it the only class locked to a specific role. Since their kits are equipped to do as much damage as possible, and since they're ranged attackers, balance dictates they forego a lot of tools and privileges in favor of that damage. As a result, the presence of crowd control, long range dashes, durability, and sustain is few and far between. Even though Lucian, Ezreal, Tristana, and Samira each have a mobility spell, all of them have an extremely long cooldown, usually 15 to 25 seconds, which is far longer than most melee dashes that can hover around 8 to 12 and usually cover a wider distance. The caveat, of course, is that each one can have their cooldowns lowered through some condition. Lucian's is through Light Slinger, Ezreal is through Landing Mystic Shot, and the final two can have their cooldowns reset upon meeting a certain condition. Adding on to that, their range status makes them have far less base stats to offset that concession. Much less health, much less attack damage, armor, magic resist, and scaling to boot. Furthermore, they're obligated to spec into items that give attack damage, crit chance, and attack speed to fully optimize their auto attacks to do like 1500 damage per second. And as you know, crit items don't do exactly that good a job providing stats outside of those three. For other carry classes like fighters, mages, and assassins, they often have the liberty to purchase one or sometimes even two defensive items that still come armed with some form of damage. AP champions have access to a wide variety of gear that supply them with survivability to a degree. Demonic Embrace, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, Cosmic Drive, and Royal Anomicon give health, and quite a bit at that. As for armor and magic resist, you have Zhonya's Hourglass and Banshee's Veil. AD champions have some as well, Sterex Gauge, Black Cleaver, Titanic Hydra, Kenpunk Chainsword for health, and defense you have Death Stance, Mob Malmordius, Guardian Angel, and I suppose with Zen. There's also some situational tools like the two QSS items and Edge of Night. While they won't come anywhere close to actual tank items, you can count on them to keep you alive for a few more hits, and that very well may be the difference between life and death. Where I'm going with this is that marksmen are the only class whose survivability does not improve in any meaningful way and therefore needs to be supplemented by any physical protection their teammates can provide them. That's why, no matter how strong an ADC gets in terms of items, it always feels like they run into situations where they can be rendered completely useless, because if their support is too busy engaging or helping out the rest of their team, all a diver or assassin needs is a second of alone time with you and you're gone. Also yes, I'm aware of Immortal Shield Bow being an easy source of anti-burst damage, but there's two things that make that item not as amazing as people think. One, you take a huge damage cut since it provides less combat stats compared to Kraken Slayer and Gale Force, and you have no damaging passive or active. Two, they have absolutely no armor or magic resist behind that shield. The reason Sterex Gauge makes bruisers overwhelmingly more resistant is because they have higher base armor and magic resist and likely have either tabbies or merc treads. And that's also why champions like Yasuo and Yone feel more defensive with shield bow than AD carries, because melee champions just have more defense. Health alone cannot protect you from burst damage if there's no armor or magic resist to back it up, and vice versa. I mean, better to have a little bit of it than not at all, but you get what I mean. It's not a saving grace. For many marksmen, the fundamental issue is that they simply take too long to scale. That's not to say they can't put up a fight by the mid-game, they do start dishing out some major punishment, but they're still tethered to their team when it comes to staying alive. In no universe does a 3-item Ash, Caitlyn, Jin, Jinx, so on and so forth stand even the slightest chance against a 3-item Darius, Camille, Akali, or Yasuo. It's just not gonna happen. Mages? Maybe. That's a hard maybe. The reason the mid game is a huge sore spot for them is because they still don't have enough crit chance to consistently score critical strikes. By 20 to 25 minutes, they're only sitting at 40 to 60%. So it's not until their fifth or sixth item where they really start busting out the 40-foot chainsaw and 1v9 games without their support's help. However, in an era where games become progressively quicker and quicker, there might be more instances where the jungler or solo laners are the deciding factor in games and the AD carry isn't. Prior to Season 6, they were crucial to the team because they and the mid laner were pretty much the only ones who had both the ability and wherewithal to do so. 
Top laners generally consisted of tanks or bruisers, and back in the day there weren't many good bruiser items, so it usually consisted of just black cleaver then full tank for a lot of them. We didn't get Sterex Gage and Death Stance until late season 5, and Maw of Malmordius was a pretty trash item. Well, technically it still is now. Junglers were nothing like they are today. They had much less access to gold and the pool of champions was a lot smaller since only a select few could actually survive the first clear, and not many of them were 1v9 carries besides maybe Kha'Zix. So essentially, most junglers were tanks back in the day or strong early gamers like Lee Sin and Elise if memory serves. Oh, and supports were also just tanks and enchanters for the most part. You know what I mean, ADCs were the only one of two roles that could provide their team a carry champion with consistently good scaling pressure. Nowadays, pretty much all five roles have the capacity to carry, even supports can due to Senna, Pike, Bard, Zyra, and for a time we had Pantheon and set support dominating the meta too. From Season 5 onward, Riot has been trying to make it so that any role has equal chance to carry in solo queue, and by extension, every class can carry in solo queue. We're not in tank meta anymore, but tanks have definitely been able to bring the pain on equal fronts with other carry-oriented classes. Now, I probably lost about half of all ADC means at this point, but for those of you still around, I'd like to introduce a counterpoint to myself. If we go by the logic behind the points I've made up until now, wouldn't that also apply to literally every other class? Since you can interchange top, jungle, mid, and support with different types of champions, wouldn't that mean no role is necessary? Uh, yes, actually. I think that was the reason Riot has tried to give agency to each class, to allow players the freedom to explore other options and not be tied down to playing X character from Y class in Z role. So if that were the case, it would make sense for bot laners as well to have more than just a couple mages or Yasuo for alternative choices. Now, one could argue that teams need a ranged source of DPS since they have a much higher damage ceiling than other champions in the right circumstances. But if range DPS is necessary, there are other champions in other roles who can meet that criteria. We have Kindred and Graves in the jungle. I know Graves is a specialist and not really a marksman, but he builds crit items. Mid lane still has a very colorful cast of high range DPSs who probably outclass marksmen in damage against objectives, so it's not like bot lane is the only option anymore. We've already proven through Jin, Ezreal, and lethality builds like Varus and Sivert that not having a walking machine gun isn't exactly a detriment to a team's composition. Also, Kaisa and Samira are two of the most popular marksmen right now, and both of them are technically close range ADCs. Samira goes smack dab in the middle of a team fight at that. A thought I had when making this video was whether or not a team would be able to function effectively in multiple circumstances without a marksman. It's a known fact at this point that AP bot laners like Seraphine, Swain, and Karthus can perform reasonably well even after the crit item clown fiesta in season 8 was over. Actually, it's funny because just about a week ago, Rav made a video talking about off-meta bot lane comps, and even though his content is mostly satirical, I genuinely want to know if there's any particular reason for teams to need a ranged DPS, considering half the time that range doesn't seem to really matter, what with every champion having a million dashes. And that led me to believe it might just be a cultural thing. There's a certain appeal to playing high-risk, high-reward playstyles, and that sort of embodies all marksmen. You're playing someone who can theoretically 1v9 games with extremely high damage output, and even though all roles now have the potential to carry, ADCs do still win the lion's share of damage for the team in a lot of games. The mechanical complexity adds onto that too. Knowing in every fight you're a small mistake away from death can be stressful but also exhilarating, and seeing people fully master Kai'Sa, Vayne, Aphelios, or other really technical champions can be pretty amazing, at least if you're on the winning team. So that could be the explanation for it. Outside of that, I think the pragmatic importance of ADCs has long since expired. One other thing I think that can be looked into by extension is whether supports need to be only tanks or enchanters. Considering how in Season 10, Pantheon and Set were pretty popular picks even though supports have the lowest access to gold and experience, it's also a possibility. Anyway, even though I'm challenging the belief that ADCs need to exclusively comprise the bot lane role, I'm not making a statement or pushing for a movement that we need to get people to stop playing them. People play what they want to play. The Season 11 item changes have done wonders for them in my opinion, and now they're at a point where item purchases are satisfying and meaningful, especially in the early game. But when examining the class as a whole, I do think it's kind of surprising that it's been close to a decade since the 5 rules were established, and we never once as a community explored what other scenarios can come out of having more variety down in the bot lane instead of a marksman and tank or enchanter 90% of the time. But that wraps up everything I want to talk about marksmen. Let me know what you think about whether or not ADC is a dying class down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated, and don't forget to sub to the channel for more content. 
Consider following me on my socials and join my Discord server if you like. Also, if you haven't checked out my previous episodes on Fighters and Slayers, I highly suggest you do so. But for now, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.